piano. <laughs> you ready? Hi everyone, welcome back to the channel. My name is Peter Barber. I'm a professional singer and music producer, and today we're gonna to be checking out Will Ramos's cover of Chokehold by Sleep Token, which I just watched for the first time right before this. I mean, Sleep to the the original song by Sleep Token. I had never heard them before. And I've gotten so many recommendations after I did Into the Hellfire by Lorna Shore um, to do this specific cover that Will has done of Sleep Token. I know he's done a number of covers. Um, I've had the great pleasure of meeting Will. I'll throw up a picture here. He and Elizabeth came to my performance of The Barber of Seville, this opera <clears throat> that was in Tucson when Will was visiting Elizabeth there. Um, so I've gotten to meet him. Super nice, fun, amazing, charismatic guy. Um, it's so crazy to hear his deathcore vocals come out of him. Um, and hope to meet him again and, and work with him on, on something in the future. But guys, this is Will Ramos' chokehold vocal cover, Sleep Token. I will be pausing. This is a reaction and analysis, so I will be pausing to talk about vocal technique and other musical elements that I hear or find interesting for the benefit that you guys hear and experience the music in a way that you haven't before. So, without further ado, let's check out Will Ramos' chokehold, Sleep Token. This, this to my to my ear, I mean, I just listened to the original. This sounds atmospheric-wise, instrumentation-wise, right? These big, dark, sawtoothy, distorted guitars and synths we're hearing right now to create this atmosphere sounds exactly like the original. But he did just say mixed, mixed by Cody Stewart. So I don't know if this is like a remixed version not like a remix, but a remixed version of the song. Maybe they got the stems, the audio stems from Sleep Token so that Will could do this. Will's a big enough artist that maybe that's possible. But it, all to say, the atmosphere sounds exactly the same so far. So not sure if it's if it's a recreated version or they, or they got the original f instrumentation from Sleep Token. TBD. You guys can let me know if you know more about this. When we were made It was no accident We were tangled up like branches in a flower I remember why people suggested this to me. <clears throat> because in Into the Hellfire, we hear Will showcasing all of his deathcore vocals, right? The super intense guttural, the pig squeals. He's using he's using parts of his vocal track to make sounds that are not the vocal folds, which is like cutting edge. It's in the cutting edge voice science that Elizabeth is working on now, figuring out how singers like Will make some of the sounds they do. Absolutely fascinating. And I remember people told me to check this one out because it's a great example of him doing a lot more clean singing, which you wouldn't expect someone who does deathcore vocals to be able to even do. And I love this right now. I think it's the perfect blend. It's like 90% clean, but there's an edge to the sound, right? We still get a, just just a hair of that grit and rasp and vocal distortion um, and, vocal, and turbulence to the vocal folds in here. But overall, it's a very clean sound, and especially compared to you know, what you hear in Into the Hellfire. Um, I absolutely love Will's voice. It's just phenomenal. We'll get back to the musical analysis in just a bit, but first I have to tell you guys about the sponsor for this video, Aura. You know, I recently searched my name and email on Google just to see what popped up. Some things 
really, really cool, actually. There were a few articles written about me that I was unaware of. I also came up on famouscelebrities.com, which is hilarious, but also really cool. But some other results were much less desirable. I found my contact information on these long lists on various websites, and it's pretty unsettling to think how accessible our information is to basically anybody that goes looking for it. It actually made me really uncomfortable to see that much personal information out there for scammers, spammers, and anyone else that these data brokers are selling this information to. They seriously have everything. They have our names, they have our addresses, they have information about our relatives. All that information is out there and waiting to be exploited. That is why I have started using Aura, the sponsor for today's video. They automatically go through and submit opt-out requests to get your information off of these websites and out of the hands of these data brokers. Cleaning up my digital footprint not only reduces all the spam that's coming into my email and other accounts, but it protects me from hackers who are trying to get my social media information, trying to get my bank information and other very sensitive data. And unfortunately, it's not just the data brokers that we have to worry about. Sometimes institutions that we really trust make mistakes and leak our information. Just recently, AT&T revealed that over 73 million customers, either former or current, had their information leaked into the dark web. They recommended those affected change their passwords, start monitoring all their accounts much more closely, consider freezing lines of credit, get fraud alerts, all of this stuff. But guys, Aura now does all of that for me. I don't need a million apps for a million different services telling me what's going on. Aura does all of it. Why should we have to have all these apps and pay for all these services just because one company couldn't keep our data secure? Personally, I'm not gonna leave myself or my family and relatives vulnerable to these kinds of data breaches. So if you don't want to either, head to https colon slash slash aura.com slash Peter Barber to get two free weeks of Aura's phenomenal protection. The link is right here. The link is down there. Head over to Aura, get two free weeks of phenomenal world-class protection. Guys, keep your data secure. And now, back to the video. We want tangled up like branches in a flood. Like I'll see he tapers more and more off the voice as that phrase goes on. Until it's a lot more breathy by the time he gets to the very end of it, revs down the intensity going to the end of that phrase. That's really nice, has a nice shape to it. Angled up like branches in a flood. Yeah, awesome. I come as a blue. That's a totally clean vocal and then a nice flip up into that head voice there. I come as a uh, 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 uh. He's also using a, a slight coup de glot, glottal attack to get that really good vocal fold closure. That's different than a coordinated onset, which would be ha, uh, ha, uh, ha. Uh. He's going ah, uh, ah, uh, and that really helps the vocal folds come together cleanly, come together and get what's high, what's called a high closed quotient, meaning during each oscillation or each wacka wacka of the vocal folds, as Elizabeth says, the vocal folds are together for a longer period of time, a higher percentage of the time. That creates vocal fold closure, which creates that buzz, that squeal, that high harmonic content in the sound. It's what we as opera singers aim for all the time because we are singing with no amplification with an entire orchestra. So you've got to be really loud and really efficient with your sound, and that comes from vocal fold closure. And 
you can tell there's a lot of there's tight vocal fold closure and there's what's called subglottic pressure pressure building up below the vocal folds because at the end of these phrases he's going uh, and there's air to be let go there's air that's being held under the vocal folds that is then has to be released at the end of the phrase more on this next one yeah there's that extra air that has to has to come out so you keep me sharp and test my worst in blood i love the difference in colors we get phrase to phrase like i said a minute ago we get this clean singing but then he goes and pulls back you know almost to the point of a whisper by the end of the phrase. So we get an intense sound and then a much softer sound. And that again comes down to vocal fold closure. As he goes throughout that phrase, he's simply allowing more air to escape. So it goes from a very pure tone to a much more breathy tone. Got me in a choke hold. You got me in a choke hold. It really sounds like they got the original stems from Sleep Token. And then it was remixed slightly. These elements were remixed. I mean, it's very similar, but there are a few changes I'm hearing. Um, but overall, it sounds very much like the original so i'm really wondering if they if they just if will just if was able to get the stems from sleep token to make this cover In a choke hold. piano I was, you know, I was wondering because the this, this Sleep Token singer didn't put any really harsh vocals in there. Certainly not deathcore vocals. So I was wondering if Will was going to put a, a big Will spin on this cover. <clears throat> which is what you would want, right? You wouldn't want it exactly the same. That's not very interesting. But it's really cool to hear him sing stylistically very much like the original. And then put the Will Ramos spin on it where he introduces all these crazy harsh vocals into it totally revs up the intensity <laughs> like how he starts that clean and then goes into it you yeah. right i can't do it i need to learn how to do it i would love to actually <laughs> So to keep some of that warmth and darkness in the sound, you can see Will rounding his lips like crazy. This creates a slightly longer vocal tract position, which <clears throat> I was learning from Elizabeth and talking to her about this. And we use similar techniques in opera, actually. And as you know, Elizabeth was a professional opera singer as well uh, for a number of years. This, this vowel shaping, this mouth shaping really contributes to the color of a sound. You get the buzz from the from the vocal folds in most cases. Now, Will right now is likely using a number of elements that is not his that are not his true vocal folds to create these sounds. But typically, for a normal singer, <laughs> normal singer, the sound, the pitch is created at the level of the vocal folds, and then the vocal tract and the shape of it is what is what shapes it and colors it, and the tongue position. The tongue has a lot to do with it. Um, so it's really cool to see in deathcore with Will here using the same like vocal track shape changes that I might use as an opera singer to create a color of the sound 
and he's using it as well. And I think in this case, if you if you lengthen the vocal tract and you round the lips, you're trying to get a more darker, a more a more dark covered kind of sound to it, a less less high frequency in the sound, less ah, and more. Oh. Um, and you see, there's a perfect screenshot of him right here <clears throat> doing that vowel shaping. <laughs> Back to totally clean. Above the mountain peaks, it's all the same to me. It makes no difference. I've seen my days unfold, done the impossible. I'll turn my walls to gold to bring. I love how there's a there's a few moments on hold where his vibrato actually comes in. It's a very fast vibrato, and a lot of vibrato is kind of natural. Um, you can alter it slightly with with breath speed and sometimes with age, or if you if you sometimes opera singers will develop what's called a wobble when the musculature just can't really control the vibrato as well anymore, so it gets wider. Will has a very fast vibrato. And it comes out in just a few moments here. Oh, at the ends of these phrases. I've seen my days unfold. Right there. really nice multi-tracking there where it's it's clearly a number of Will's voices all at the same time so we get we get Will in a full kind of stereoscopic image from the middle all the way around to the left and right ear if you're listening in headphones um that is just a wonderful audio engineering tool to make a sound bigger more atmospheric you can do a million different things with it but this one it's just multi-track so we're getting Will's voice in slight variations everywhere if it was the same track, if they just took a track and then tripled it, you actually wouldn't really hear much difference except it'd be louder. But because you can sing a song with the exact same timing, but because of the variations in the voice, you can't do it. It's impossible to do it exactly the same. And because we're so perceptive as humans, we will hear those very slight changes. So even if you, if you sing a, a vocal track three times, you put one in the middle, one on the right, one on the left. Even if you perfectly tune them and perfectly align them with syllables and vowels and everything, you will still be able to hear three voices because of those other minor discrepancies between them. Uh, and that's kind of what we're getting here. Go back to the start so you guys can hear this stereoscop stereoscopic image come in. So vocal right here. Just one. So cool. Now his voice is everywhere. how easy those high G's are for Will. Choke hold. And he's in perfect, he's in perfect chest connection. 
that is, I mean, really remarkable. That is very, I mean, that is the ease of a very, very high tenor voice, which I don't think he is naturally, but I think because of singing so much and, and pushing his voice to the limits, he has stretched out his vocal range like crazy. I mean, those are very easy high Gs. <laughs> And similarly how I commented on the lead singer of Sleep Token, we're getting vibrato on these high Gs, which means you have to have an inherent freedom and ease to the sound because the higher part of your chest range, it gets more and more difficult to keep a nice natural vibrato because you have to recruit so much breath support and you have to have really good vocal fold closure and you have to have enough tension here to stretch the enough vocal fold strength to stretch the vocal folds out so you can reach those notes all while having enough freedom and relaxation in your voice and in your system to maintain vibrato. So this is easy. I mean, this is easy for Will, singing, singing these high Gs with vibrato. So I love that long sustain hey, going, going all the way in after all the chords resolve but he's still sitting on that D hey. really really awesome what a great suggestion guys thank you for this um, Will's got an amazing voice man I am um, I'm gonna reach out to him sometime soon about coming on the podcast because I would love to chat with him about that and Elizabeth and I have become such good friends we're Will feels like a like a stepbrother or something because we haven't interacted much, but through Elizabeth we're all we're all a unit. Um, really enjoy this, guys. Hope you hope you gain some appreciation for Will or for the song. I hope you learn something about the voice, about vocal technique. That is my whole goal here, or about audio engineering or instrumentation. I talk more about that when I listened to the original one. I was commenting a lot more on the instrumentation and the arrangement and stuff like that. This is more just for Will's vocals. But I hope you guys enjoyed. If you did, consider throwing me some money on Buy Me a Coffee. You can do a one-time donation or joining my Patreon community, my Patreon family. We have a good time, guys. There's like 700 people over there now. And everyone interacts in the Discord. I'm in the Discord every day. I'm very active on there. So that's one-on-one -on -one engagement if you're interested in that as well. Anyway, guys, I'll see you in the next Will Ramos video. Peace out.